I, someone's asked for help with practice paper two. Sorry, practice paper set two, paper one. And they've asked for help on specific questions. So these are the questions. So the questions are question seven, eight part two, and 10 and 11. So first question is a bearings question. So the way that I did that was I drew a diagram. Now, this is asking for two different possible bearings. So you know that that's going to be something to do with the sine rule because when you solve sine equations that there are two possible solutions between zero and 180. So for part one, the first thing I did was I did a diagram that could have looked like that. And then I did a diagram where I extended it where it could have looked like that. But the key is this triangle. I knew that I, because of my bearing being 155 and my side measurements, I knew that the triangle that I was going to form was going to look like that. I have a known side opposite a known angle. So I want to find this angle here, angle A. So it was a straightforward use of the sine rule. So I substituted in for the sine rule and I ended up with the sine of A being 0.922. Now, because I could get two solutions where the angle lay between zero and 180, like it does in a triangle, these were my two possible bearings. So they're my answers. Now the shortest distance from a triangle is always the perpendicular. So what I did there is if I go back to one of my original diagrams, it doesn't really matter which one I take, I'm just gonna think of the perpendicular there. So it's going to be basic trigonometry. So I just draw a right angle triangle. I label it just as in my usual GCSE trigonometry. Obviously it's opposite and hypotenuse, so it's sine. So the shortest distance for part two is 2.03. And then there's that little chatty bit where they ask you give a reason. Well, obviously you know that coastlines are virtually never straight. They then asked for help with eight part two. Now eight part two was a good question and it asked for detailed reasoning. So you obviously couldn't put it in your calculator. So the first thing I did was I expanded that bracket, right? So I needed to be really careful, sec, so I expanded it and I got sec 2x all squared, sec 2x tan 2x plus tan 2x all squared. Now the identity I know is that one plus tan squared of any angle is the sec squared of that angle. So I replaced my angle with two x. So I get one plus tan squared of two x is sec squared of two x. I then rewrote what I'd asked, been, I'd expanded. So sec squared two x plus two sec two x tan x tan two x plus tan squared two x becomes sec squared 2x plus 2 sec 2x plus tan 2x plus sec squared 2x minus 1. I gather them together, I get that expression, and now I'm going to integrate it and I've got my limits. Now, you know that the in, on your formula sheet at the front of all these exam papers, it tells you that the derivative of tan x is sec squared x, which means you can use that to integrate sec squared x. So I know the integral of sec squared x is tan x, and from part one of this question, they've got you to show that if the derivative of sec squared is sec x tan x, then the integral of sec x tan x is sec x. So by doing my integration, this is what I'm gonna end up with. Okay, so I've ended up with tan 2x plus sec 2x minus x, and then I've got my limits pi over 6 and pi over 12. I substitute them in. Now, make sure you show this because it says show detailed reasoning. Obviously, you're doubling your angles. You can see there with my sec pi over 3, I forgot to do it for a moment. Then I've got, um, so, and then I substitute in my pi over 6, and then I substitute in my pi over 12, being really careful. Showing detailed reasoning, don't cut corners. So make sure you get your values there. You can't cut corners here and just get an answer. 
and then you end up with the rather neat answer 2 minus pi over 12. Question 10 is a long question with very little structure and it's 10 marks. So your first one is your implicit differentiation. So you carefully differentiate this implicitly, remembering you differentiate y's with respect to y and then multiply by dy dx. So watch your sign here. So I've differentiated my expression and put it equal to zero. Do be careful, I think I accidentally put a plus there, that's why I've now got a very strong minus sign. So, get your dy dx's on one side and your non-dy dx's on the other. Take out a factor of dy dx and then get an expression for dy dx and put it equal to zero. Now you know that will equal zero when the numerator equals zero. And the numerator equals zero when 2x is 4y or y is a half x. You're now going to substitute this back in. Bear in mind, this is 10 marks. You're easily going to be spending about 13 minutes on this question. You substitute it back in very carefully. So I've substituted it back into the original equation. and I'm going to end up with a rather nice cubic. Now, detailed reasoning. You can't just put this in your calculator and write the answer down. You are going to put it in your calculator and then pretend that you haven't. So put it in your equation for your degree 3 polynomial and you'll see that the only solution you're going to get here, real solution, is x equals 2. You're now going to use that and pretend you got it from the factor theorem. That is because the question says show detailed reasoning. So it, write down your inspired choice of f of 2. You know that if f of 2 equals 0, if f of 2 equals 0, then your solution, then you, it must be a solution. So show that f of 2 equals 0. So x minus 2 is a factor. If x minus 2 is a factor, you then again, I'm afraid because it says show detailed reasoning, I'm going to do polynomial division to be on the safe side. I divide my x cubed minus x squared minus 4 by x minus 2, and I end up with x squared plus x plus 2. So you can see I've done polynomial division there. So that means I can write my cubic like that. I still haven't answered the question though. Right, I know that x minus 2 has the solution x equals 2. I need to show that that's the only solution. So it means that x squared plus x plus 2 mustn't have any solutions. The best way to do that is use the discriminant, show it. You know, 1 squared minus 8 is going to be negative 7, which means no solutions. So x equals 2 is your only solution. Right, this last bit. Now this is in that chapter, and we did this in year 13. It's modelling with trigonometry. I think the first bits are fine, but I definitely think part two is a little bit nasty. And I would go to page 141 in book two for some help with this as a little reminder. First of all, you know that the sine of any angle oscillates between one and negative one. So you know the maximum will occur when the sine of the angle is one. So straightforward answer for part one, the maximum will be 1.7 plus 0.8, so 2.5. And the minimum, oh sorry, and that will occur when the sine of 30t is one, because the sine of 90 is one, so t had to be three or three hours. Right, the next bit, part two. This bit was okay, this is just solving complicated, I suppose, trigonometric equations. So you replace um, your f of t with 1.2 and then you rearrange. So you take 1.7 off both sides and then you solve it. Obviously, I'm going to use cast, I'm not going to use those frightening curves. So I just solve it using cast, but it only wants the first time it happens. I adjusted my range, but really, I didn't really need to have, have to do all that. I was like, going into more detail and I did that using cast. So I ended up with T, is, cause it's for 30T, and then I ended up with T is 7.29. Now be careful, it asks for the time. 
right? It wants the actual time. That's not an actual time. That's 7.29 hours. So I know it's seven hours. So I multiplied the 0 0.29 by 60 and I got 17 minutes. So my actual time is 0 0.717 hours. Right. I think this next bit is hard. I think um, really difficult. So what I would do is I would have a little refresh on page 141 from the textbook. So I started off the bit which I thought was straightforward. I know the maximum height is using A plus B from this question and the minimum height is A minus B. So I set up a pair of simultaneous equations and that was fine. So I then substituted them into my equation. And then I thought, you know what? I think this is quite difficult. I'm gonna refresh and look at that bit on page 141. Now it talks about the period of the curve. Now in radians, that's, um, and if, if you look, if you sort of adjust it to what you've got in this question, the period of the curve, that's the bit that repeats is two pi over the modulus of C or 360 over the modulus of C. The period is 12, it repeats every 12 hours. So 12 is 360 over the modulus of C. Rearrange that, so C must be 30. So I've got it down to this. And then I use the final bit um, where you knew that when T is five, the value you were getting is 3.1, the max height was 3.1. So I substituted in everything that I knew. And then I did some more solving of a trig equation. So I managed to get that down to that where D was minus 60. And if D was minus 60, it all gathered together to make this final equation. So I thought that was a pretty hard question. And then the last bit, um, if you, you that they're asking it to be a longer period, you need a longer repeat, which means your value of C is going to be smaller. 